Now answer this practical question, Professor Friedman. <laughs> and, and, and there are some angry people who would say, come down from your academic tower and tell us how we're going to get automobile dealers who really care about servicing the car as much as they care about selling us the car. Uh, tell us how we're going to get automobile dealers <laughs> who, uh, who, who sell us uh, safety with the same vigor that they sell us cosmetics. Well, if the public at large really wanted to buy safety rather than cosmetics, it would be in the self-interest of the automobile dealers to sell them safety. You have had some automobile companies that has, have concentrated on selling safety, and they have not done very well in the sales. You can't blame. Here you have, let me to give you a very simple example. You have the so-called Superba car, which is built by the Checker company mm -hmm. that produces Checker uh, cabs. cabs. They emphasize safety. It's the safest car probably there is built in America. They haven't been able to sell very many. If the, the problem with your, your talk is that you're not talking in terms of what the consumer really wants as judged by what he's willing to pay for. You're talking in terms of what you think he ought to want. I am also taught, okay, so the underpinning here, under, underneath your statement here is the stupid public want land out no, no. cops and no, colors so and they, no, buy, so they put blue lights on these cars in the showrooms and everybody says, yeah, I want one of those, I'm not like Pavlov's dog. I'm not going to call them stupid. The public is entitled to buy what it wants to buy. Who am I to say whether those tastes are better or no, worse I mean, than my taste? What's your Who conclusion on a person who's more interested in uh, the, the style of a car than whether or not the baby's protected after the collision? Well, That's stupid. I think he has every right to pursue his own objectives and his own tastes, and I have every right to try to persuade him he's wrong. Okay. But if I can't persuade him, do I have the right to force him? Now, you don't bring in the baby because that raises another and an extraneous and very difficult issue. Because I, I will agree with you, he does not have the right. To put a baby to like an egg baby. in a crate. And That's right. Around. That's a different question. A third party effect is different. I trust you wouldn't pass a law to oblige babies to be constrained in cars. No, I probably would not. But I think that I would... You're not very comfortable in saying no to the no, question. No, 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 I'm comfortable. But what I would do is I would say that any parent who, uh, any ch parent ought to be subject to suit and to being sent to jail if uh, a child has been damaged because of that parent's Right. Are you willing to pay for the prosecutor that it's going to take to develop the evidence that the mother didn't place the car pro baby properly in the car and the bureaucracy that will accompany the enforcement of the law which uh, yes, says that you can yes. go to jail if you Unf don't? Unfortunately, okay, I have so to pay for it. I'm not, as I say, so there are limits I'm not to an your anarchist. Freezes, I'm right? not an anarchist. Okay. I believe that government has a very important role, but it's a limited role. Okay. And because we've been trying to extend the role, we haven't been doing what government ought to do as well as it does, as it should. Mm -hmm. We've been doing a terrible job on what ought to be the first function of government. The first function of government is to protect the nation against foreign enemies and to protect individual citizens against assault by their fellows.